Thank you, immortal God. Thank you, invincible God. Thank you, our Father, creator of heaven and earth, maker of all things. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your overwhelming mercies. Thank you for your grace. We are so grateful for the right given unto us, for the privilege, for the power given unto us to manifest, live the kingdom, even your kingdom, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And hallelujah. GTC Music, you can take your seat. Thank you so much. Oh. oh, Jesus. Please prepare your offering. I'm, I'm, I'm sure by now you should be prepared with your offering. If you have offering for the needy fund, get it ready. If, if we don't have any of the needy envelope, just with a pen, just write needy at the back of the envelope. Offering for project, right project at the back of it. And your worship offering, right nothing. <laughs> Amen. Good. This morning, we'll be looking at the topic, understanding the kingdom. Understanding the kingdom. And um, I trust that and believe that God will bring you some fresh insights that will revolutionize your life, Amen. propel you to another level Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's good. All right. If your offerings are set, please lift it to Jesus and wave it unto Jesus. Wave it unto Jesus. We're waving it to Jesus. And say with me, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say it again, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please cast your offerings, drop it. Mata so take marataya over the mountains and say thank you. Your river flows with love for me. Mada dosaya, mada dosaya, bante sete, mada la da ba la ba la ba la ba, beka taya da la da ba dante. Thank you, Jesus. Ha. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. All right, two things. Let me do this quickly. Uh. Priscilla, come, please, quickly. Um, are we done? Okay. I was seeing this severe headache, right? These severe headaches that comes and even have effect on your eyes, so severe. And uh, please, uh, Mrs. Go just listen to me because the solution to the headache is not medication. It's just rest, sleep, sleep, rest. Sleep. Sleep. I don't know if she gets enough rest, but I was seeing that even if she wakes up to come prepare the place for selling, by afternoon, let her go and rest and you take over. It's just rest that will solve that thing. <laughs> Receive the power of God to give you good sleep and restructure that which is tormenting you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good, 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 good. <coughs> look 
Manchester. Please come. Let me just finish this. Oh, God. <clears throat> I'll see you leave, leave a place of cleansing. And I, it wasn't you alone, but there was this young boy with you. I know you have a son, right? You have a daughter. You don't have a son. But I was seeing this young boy also live with you. Okay. Whatever had been tormenting your life, the power of God to clean has accomplished its work. And it's not only for you, but I saw a boy, a young boy. Whoever that young boy is, I should take yours, take his fully in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good. Ah, all right. And let's uh, forget, I was seeing you clothed in beautiful garments. I was seeing you clothed in beautiful garments. Let that beauty of the Lord come upon you afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good. Good. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, we were praying two nights ago and God was making it clear <clears throat> that it's time for the manifestation of the prophetic grace. So we'll be hoping to see more of the operation of the prophetic in our midst. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. It's time. So we'll work in it. Amen. Good. This morning, Maso Tabakawa. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, 
Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 4. We are looking at the topic or the subject, understanding the kingdom. Understanding the kingdom. Mark chapter 1, verse 4. Please listen carefully. All right. Right now, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, every darkness covering your eyes of understanding, I rip it off now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And by the blood of Jesus, I I procure understanding for you concerning the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said that unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, the secrets of the kingdom. Unto you it's given. But those that are without, it's parables. This morning, anyone that is within, anyone that is part of this movement of GTC, I declare and demand by the blood of the Lord that the mysteries of the kingdom will not be a parable unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But you will gain understanding as you hear. You will gain understanding as you listen in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. It says, John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. When John came, John, the one we call or we know as John the Baptist, when John came, he went out baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance. For the remission of sins. He was baptizing. And he was preaching why he was baptizing. And he was saying that you need to repent from your sins. That's why he was preaching. And those that come convicted to repent from their sins, they are baptized. Are you following me? So he was baptizing a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So the purpose of his baptism was for forgiveness of sins or cleansing of sins. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And it says, then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went and were baptized. And when they were baptized, they, are, they were confessing their sins. It says, went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Confessing their sins. Because it was a baptism unto confession of sins. So when they were being baptized, they were confessing their sins. <laughs> Verse 7. It says that, and he preached, saying, 
There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and lose. There, come, there comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and lose. What he is trying to say is, when we talk about the sandals, often it's about message. Message. He's saying that the person that is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not even worthy. I am not even fit to lose his sandals, the strap. I can't, I'm not worthy to lose. It means that I can't even open up his message. I am not worthy to open up the message he's bringing. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Then he went in verse 8. He says, I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I indeed, I, John, I am baptizing you with water. But this person that is coming, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I am baptizing you with water unto remission of sins. But there's someone coming, he will baptize you with Holy Ghost. Unto what? <laughs> because John was explaining the purpose of his baptism. The purpose of his baptism was for the remission of sins. So whilst, when he baptized, they come out confessing their sins. God forgive me, last night I took one fish out of the soup. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. <laughs> forgive me, last night I headed somebody. <laughs> last night I, I, I passed by some corner. God forgive me. When they were baptized, they confessed their sins because that was the purpose of the baptism. But John was saying that I came baptizing with water. There's someone also that is coming who is mightier than I. That person will baptize with what? Will baptize with what? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> Uh, verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And immediately coming up from, from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. John was baptizing for the remission of sins. And then Jesus also came to be baptized by John. When they are baptized, they confess their sins. But Bible documents that when Jesus was baptized, he was praying, not confessing sins. Praying. Amen. So obviously, Jesus did not go on to that baptism for the remission of sins because he had no sin. Amen. But we see why he went on to that baptism. When he was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Ghost came upon him. And the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And then there was a voice that came from heaven. After the Holy Ghost came, there was a voice that came that said, You are my beloved son. And obviously, that voice is the voice of the Father. Because it's only a father that will call a son. Is that not it? Uh, 
It's only father that will call son. If he says, you are my beloved son, then he's the father, right? He says, you are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Ghost came upon him, and a voice sounded. He says, immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered to him. Verse 14. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. After John was put to prison, John was preaching the baptism of remiss remission of sins. Baptism of water for the remission of sins. And then Jesus came and was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And what was Jesus saying? And saying, the time is fulfilled. The time is what? The time is what? Let me hear from you. The time is what? The time is fulfilled. Not the time will be fulfilled. Not the time will be fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. It's a present tense reality. Are you following me? It says the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is here. It's at hand. It's here. So it's not that the kingdom of God is going to come. The kingdom of God is here. The time is fulfilled. Is somebody with me this morning? Yeah. It says the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is here. Not the kingdom of God will come. It's here. So why are you waiting for the kingdom of God? Jesus said the time is fulfilled. The kingdom is here. Understanding the kingdom. And he says, repent and believe in the gospel. So you see, look at Jesus' message and John the Baptist's message. John the Baptist was, repent from your sins. Right? Repent from your sins. So they, they focus on confessing their sins. Jesus was, repent, believe in the gospel. <laughs> Jesus was, repent, believe in what? Are you following me? Repent, believe in what? The gospel. So the repentance Jesus was calling us unto it's a repentance of a change of mind to believe in what he brought. The message is brought. Can I say something? There's no way you can believe in the message he brought and sin will not be a thing of the past. So his focus, his focus wasn't confessing of sins. His focus was, change your mind. Believe in this gospel I brought. My gospel is that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is what? The time is fulfilled. The kingdom is here. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom is here. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom is here. Not the kingdom will come. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom is here. 
So Jesus was talking in his days that the kingdom is here. Understanding the kingdom. All right. My father. Hmm. Okay. Now, let's first go to Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. So if Jesus said, the kingdom is here, what was he saying? The kingdom is here. Repent, the kingdom is here. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should sign on them. Their minds are blinded by the God of this age who do not want them to believe because if they believe the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ the glory of Christ and Christ is the image of God who will shine upon them Let that light shine upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That light of the glory of Christ. Let it shine upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But here he says that Christ, who is the image of God, Christ is the what? Christ is the what? Christ is the what? Is the image of God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. I was talking about Christ here. He says, well, He is the image of what? He is the image of what? He is the image of the invisible God. What it means is that if you want to see God, if you've seen Christ, you've seen God. Is somebody with me? It says Christ is the image of the invisible God. Christ is the image of God. Christ is the resemblance of God. So what it means is that if you want to see God, it's if you see Christ, you have seen God. Are you following me? If, if you have seen Christ, you have seen God. Because Christ is the image of the invisible God. Christ is the image of God. Christ is the image of God. Christ is the image of the invisible God. John chapter 14.
from verse 7. Okay, let's start from. Let's start from verse 1. Jesus talking, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Verse 4. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? <laughs> Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through what? Me. Verse 7. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. You get it? If you have known me, you, have, you would have known my Father also. Because Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So if you know me, you would have known the Father. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Because if you know me, you know the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Are you following me? Are you following me? Okay. Verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Are you following me? He who has seen me has also seen the Father. So how can you say that I should show you the Father? Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And that is John 10, 10. I and my Father are what? One. I am in the Father, and the Father in me. I am one with the Father. That's what he was trying to say. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So Jesus was saying that believe that I am one with the Father. Believe that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am the image of the Father. Hebrews chapter 1. 
Are you Lord God Almighty? What is the land? What is the land? You are holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Ah. Before I, I bring Hebrews chapter 1, let me just go back to this place and just make some statements. Please listen carefully. He went on in verse 12 to say that, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Please, are you with me? He who believes in me, the works that I do, I, Jesus, the works I do, he will do also. And greater works than this he will do because I go to what? Earlier on, he has said that in his father's house, there are many mansions. Mansion is dwelling place. A mansion is a dwelling place. It's where you dwell. Amen. A mansion is where someone dwells. Right? So, we can say, uh, in, 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 in a way for you to understand, the house of God is where God dwells. So, he said that in my father's house, there are many mansions, there are many dwelling places. Mansion for who? <laughs> I like that. Mansion for who? In my father's house, there are many places to dwell. If it were not so, I would have told you. So he was saying that there is that provision in his father's house. Otherwise, he would not say it. Then he said that, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare the place, I will come and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you can be also. When he talks about a mansion, he's not talking about a building for you to go into. Listen to me carefully this morning. He said, in my father's house, or in my father's plan, there is provision for him to dwell in many people. That's why he said, don't you believe that my father is in me and I am in him? There is provision for God to dwell in people. Emmanuel, God with us. Are you following me? There's provision for God to dwell in people. So there's a place for dwelling. If it was not so, I won't tell you. But I go to make it possible for you. Because he needed to go to the cross to make that possible. The cross was what was going to make it possible for others. He came with that possibility. He was the dwelling place of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus was the dwelling place of God. He came with that possibility. But he wanted us to also have that possibility. That is why I say, where I am, you will be also. You will be equal with me. That's what it means. It's not like a place to go and sit. Or, I, I don't know if you get me. There are expressions to signify 
him bringing you into a place of common inheritance, common stature, common nature. Amen. I needed to settle some minds. That's what I've said here. But we will dwell there more. That's why he says, I go to the Father. The works I do, you will do also. A greater works than that. That's why you need to be a dwelling place also. You need to be where he is. Because you can't do the works he does if you are not where he is. Are you following me? It's a simple analogy. Can you do the work of a mechanic if you are not a mechanic? No. You have to be a mechanic to do the work of a mechanic. So if he says the work I do, you will do also, then you have to be like him to do the works. All right. <laughs> I think, I think he's landing some porches here, so let me stay here. Are you following me, please? We are talking about the kingdom. We are talking about the kingdom. We are talking about the kingdom. Matthew chapter 11. Jesus was saying, verse 11, please listen to me. I shortly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God is greater than what? Is greater than what? Is greater than what? He who is least in the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist, who is the greatest among those born of women. So what it means is that if we want to talk essentially about the kingdom of God, we are talking about people, personalities. They make up the kingdom. It's not a geographical location. It's a personality. Are you following me? Among all those born of women, the greatest is John the Baptist. But least in the kingdom is greater than he. It means that the least in the kingdom also has a birth. We'll examine what that birth is. But the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. So the kingdom is made up of people. So the kingdom is essentially not a geographical location. That is why Jesus said that the kingdom does not come by observation. It will not be said that, lo, let's go here, the kingdom has come. Oh, let's travel to Kumasi, the kingdom of God has come in Kumasi. Oh, let's travel to uh, Europe. Oh, let's travel to America, the kingdom of God is there. Niger no, Jesus said that the kingdom of God does not come by observation. It's not a geographical thing. So, when he mentioned that of all born of women, the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist, who is the greatest, then he was referring or narrowing the conversation of the kingdom to people. Amen. People. So, as a matter of fact, when he said that the time is fulfilled, 
the kingdom is here. He was talking about himself. He is the kingdom. The kingdom is made up of people. The kingdom is a personal thing. It's, <laughs> it's, it's an individual. So Jesus was the first manifestation of the kingdom. Is somebody following me? Because the kingdom is not a geographical thing. The kingdom is not a geographical thing. It's not something that you will say, let's go today to Maryland, sorry. The kingdom is in Maryland. And then you fly and go to Maryland. Because the kingdom is there. No. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. It says, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come, see you, see. The person came preaching that the time has fulfilled, the kingdom is here. Now the Pharisees came to him to ask him, when will he come? That's what many people, uh, Christians are doing. Many Christians are behaving like the Pharisees of those days. They are still seeking a kingdom to come. Because their mind is locked into geographical manifestation. He says the Pharisees came. When the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor would they say, see here or see there. The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Like something you see with your eyes. So you go to, let's say, the kingdom or the United Kingdom. It comes with observation, right? The United Kingdom comes with observation. So when you go to the United Kingdom, you are observing the United Kingdom. You go to the United Arab Emirates, you are observing a kingdom. He said the kingdom does not come by observation. It's not a geographical thing. Or somebody will say to you, see here, or see there. It's not something you go to see. Is somebody with me this morning? The kingdom is not something that you go see. And then he said to them, the kingdom of God is within you. The actual word there is the kingdom of God is among you. Because he, he was among them. He was the first manifestation of the kingdom, so he was among them. The kingdom of God is among you and will be within you. That's another addition. It's among you and will be within you. So the kingdom is not like a land location where you go to observe, oh, this is the kingdom. Oh, there are streets of gold. Hey, there are mansions. Where is my mansion? I'll go and sit inside. I'll drink tapioca. Eat bangu in the evening. It's not a location. It's not geography. The kingdom of God 
is personality based, is individual based. So he was the first manifestation of the kingdom on earth. That's why he said that time is fulfilled. The kingdom is here. Somebody follow me. So when we talk about the kingdom, you need a shift of mind. It's not about places or locations. So the, Jesus said, the least kingdom personality is greater than John the Baptist. The least kingdom personality is greater than John the Baptist. Of all men born of women, the greatest among them is John. But the least kingdom personality is greater than John the Baptist. So I'm saying that Jesus is or was the first manifestation of the kingdom here on earth. And we saw that Jesus is the image of God. And we saw that he is the image of the invisible what? Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and then Colossians 1, 15. He's the image of the invisible God. And we saw that he testified about himself in John chapter 14 that if you've seen me, you've seen God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You don't need to see the Father again if you've seen me. So we see that when he talks about image, he talks about a complete replica or representation of someone. Right now, right now. Oh, I should have brought a mirror. Uh, any of the ladies here with a mirror, please? Ladies, please help me. Mirror, mirror, mirror. Mirror, mirror. Any lady with a mirror? Okay, thank you. Mirror people. I see myself. Who is this? Oh, are you sure it's not Mavis? Are you sure? Why are you sure it's Mavis? It's you. It's you. Oh. She looks at the image in the mirror and said, it's, it's, it's that's why he's calling that Mavis. Okay, maybe he's just there. Let me go and look for you. <laughs> Let me go and look for him. Maybe he's here. Let's look for him. Uh, okay, Eric. Who, who are you seeing? Eh? Myself. Hey, are you coming to write essay? Which class do we write myself? Class one or class two? Hey, KG two. Hey, it's advanced, so. Those times you don't write myself in KG two. <laughs> eh? He said, "Okay, all right." He said, "That is myself." Ah, are you sure it's you? It's you, Eric. Oh, no. No, no, maybe, maybe this is a, a, an adult. Let's go to a child. You know, children don't lie. They say it as it is. They won't pretend. Eh? Okay, so let's ask this one, this small one here. Who is this? It's you. Hey. He said me. I thought he would say my sister. He said me.
Okay. We've had a, a small girl. Yeah, let's go and look for a small boy. <laughs> okay, Kobe, you come. Uh, who is this? Who is this? It's me. It's you. Hey, that's Kobe. Hey, okay. It's okay. <laughs> Go and give it to Auntie Caro. <laughs> let, let the pressure go there. <laughs> All right. What, what, what I just demonstrated is that if we say somebody is an image, then the person is a complete representation of you. That is why you all saw the image in the mirror and you said, ah, this is me. Are you following me? You saw the image and said, this is me. So if he says that Jesus is the image of God, it means that when you see Jesus, you've seen God. Amen. 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 Jesus is the image of God. Look at what he says here. He says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. And the express image of his person. You see, when he talked about express image here, he was trying to say that this image, there is nothing that, can, uh, uh, that is wrong with it. It's the exact. Not, oh, if I look at it this way, it looks like me. But if I look at it that way, it doesn't look like me, Papa. Have you seen some mirrors like that before? You stand in the mirror. You do this way, you see that, okay, it, this one looks like me. But when you turn this way, you say, no, I don't think this place looks like me. So you don't like that mirror. Because the mirror gives you different images. But Hebrews 1 verse 3 was telling us that Jesus is the exact, is the exact, there is nothing wrong. With that image, it's a complete image of God. Is somebody following me this morning? Jesus is the complete image of God. Jesus is the complete image of God. And what we are saying is that Jesus was the first manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. And that the kingdom is not Defined by geographical location as personality. And the personality we're talking about is the exact image of God. No two ways about it. All right. Let me go here and then we close for this morning. Please don't miss any of this series. We are in a new dispensation, a new flow. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Can we read together, please? Maybe you read, I will just listen. One to go. Amen. God said, let us make man how? Oh. So that was the plan of God. Let us make man in our own what? 
Oh. So, when we talk about the kingdom, God started declaring the kingdom not now. It was his plan from the beginning. Man in his own image. All right, let's go ahead. 27. Okay. Now, it says God created man in his own image. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. And then he went ahead, male and female created he them. Please listen to me carefully. Please listen to me carefully. My father... So God created man in his image. Now we are hearing that Jesus is the image of God, right? Jesus is the image of what? Oh. So God created man in his image. Where is this man? You don't need to answer. Think about it. Because we are also seeing from Hebrews chapter 1 that the one that was in the exact image of God is Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 14, is the only begotten of the Father. He's the only what? So what he was trying to say that he was the only image of the Father. Is somebody following me? <laughs> he was the only image of the Father at that time. He's the only begotten of the Father. Let me go there, and then we'll come back here. God said, let us make man in our image. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, this one is, this one, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Verse 18, no one has seen God at any time. No one has seen God at any time. Listen carefully. No one, no one, what he's saying that no one, never on earth, has anyone seen God. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. He has manifested him. The only begotten son, Jesus was the first manifestation of God. He was the first image of God to ever grace this earth. Are you following me? He says no one has seen God any time. But the only begotten of the Father is, is the one who declared him, who showed for him, who manifested him, who revealed him. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's see how Paul put it here.
Verse 45. It says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became what? Became what? Became what? Became what? A life-giving spirit. The last Adam, who is Jesus Christ, was the spirit of life. The last Adam is the spirit of life. So God, God is life. God is life. If he's making somebody in his image, he's supposed to be what? Life. That is why Jesus is the exact image of God. And Paul brought this so that we can also see and not confuse ourselves with Adam. Because many things that when God said, let us make man in my image, and God made man in his image, that was Adam. No. Let me show you something. Let's, let's see something. Let's know the God we are dealing with. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. You need, you need to avail yourself to the Spirit of God to teach you. The Spirit of truth. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Listen carefully. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. As it is written, God was talking to Abraham and told Abraham, I, God, I have made you. Abraham was walking childless. Abraham was walking childless, but God said, I have made you. I have made you, I have created you a father of many nations. And then <laughs> he went on to say, in the presence of him who he believed, God, and then he was trying to describe God. He said, God, who gives life to the dead? God, who gives life to the dead? And that's what? And that's what? Are you following me? How was this describing God? God is able to call those things that do not exist as though they did. Hold this in your mind. Let me change the version to others so that we can get the brofo in various shapes <laughs> and sizes. Oh, I took the notes. Okay. Okay. Please look at it for me. It says, We believe the God who what? Makes the dead alive. And that's what? And summons the things that do not yet exist as though they already do. Do you know what is a sermon? Uh, sorry, summons. To be summoned is to be ordered to come before. It's to be ordered to come before. So he's saying that God is able to order things that are not yet in existence to come before him. <laughs> in the worldly arena, that is the ability that manifests in the architect or the draftman. You, ha you want to b put up a building or put a road up or whatever you want to put up. 
the architect is able to give you a pictorial representation. So he brings it to the now for you to see. But it's not real. But we are talking about the God of reality. If he summons the things that do not exist, so it means that he brings it into existence, even though the time is not yet. <laughs> are you following me? So when he was talking that God made man in his image, the image was yet to come. But he summons the image and summons them male and female. <laughs> the male and female is where me and you come in. The male man was Jesus, and then male and female is where we come in. <laughs> and that's where we are going to. So we know what heritage we have. So we don't we walk on this in this world with God sense and see God things come to pass in our lives. He says, the God who makes the dead alive and summons the things that do not exist as though they already do. Let me give you the passion. He says from here, he says, that God can raise the dead and call into being, are you following me? And call into being things that don't even exist yet. They don't exist yet, but he calls them into existence. That's what it means. <laughs> are you following me? They don't exist yet, but he's able to call them into existence. You need to know God in this way to understand Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27 downwards. And not confuse it with Adam. Look, we are privileged, eh? We are very privileged. So let's not allow ourselves to walk like people that are not being given revelation to know where we have come in the plan of God and take advantage of it. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see uh, a similar rendition of the, this attribute of God in Isaiah. The Bible says that by a mouth of two or three, a matter shall be established, right? You need a witness. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Listen to me carefully. It says, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is, no, there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Verse 10, it says what? Declaring the end from where? So whilst it's at the end, at the beginning, he declares the end. He brings into existence the end from the beginning. And he says, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. I don't want us to go into another stream of revelation on my pleasure. But we saw in Isaiah 53, he says, the pleasure of the Lord will, will prosper in his hand. 
at his right hand pleasure. Jesus was raised and sat at his right hand. <laughs> he says that from old, I say with audacity, I declare the end. Whilst I'm standing at the beginning, I bring into existence the end at the beginning. And I say, no matter what, you can see it, but you can't change it. So when he was declaring his plan, man, in his image and likeness, he brought it into existence. Every heavenly host saw it. Hey! And then the devil and all his cores were also there. No, you see, we see whether it can pass. He said, don't worry, I am God. There's none like me. You can't change my counsel. That's why I have the audacity to bring it into existence now. So when he was telling Abraham, Abraham, you are going childless, but I have made you. So Abraham, change your name from Abraham to Abraham. Let your wife also change your name from Sarai to Sarah. Because I, God, I say I have made you. No one can change it. I have brought you into existence as a father of many nations now. Let every host of hell and heaven and wherever see it, this man, I have made him. You can't change it. Are you following me? So what are we saying? What we are saying in short is that God's plan to make man in his image and after his likeness was realized in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the image of God. Amen. Jesus is the image of God. He is the exact image of God. Jesus is the exact image image of God. He is the exact image of God. Understanding the kingdom. Next week we will continue. That is where we are going to bring ourselves in. And understand where we we fit in, in this plan of God. <laughs> but, Lord, okay, let's wait for next week. My Father, Jesus is the exact image of God. He is the exact image of God. If you see Jesus, you see God. Like the way we saw ourselves in the mirror here and we could see ourselves. If you see Jesus, you have seen God. Don't miss that thing then you will see where you fit in. And then we'll go further to see what you have to do to make sure you align. Because it's one thing to be, and the other thing to be aligned. Having alignment is another thing. So you see the works you need to do to align. And let nobody deceive you. You see the glory of God. <laughs> Maybe let me, let me throw that one in. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, this is whetting your appetite for next week. Verse 18. It says, but we all, not only one person, we all, with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, you see it, beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same what? From glory to what? 
So we first have to be able to behold in the mirror the glory of God. If we behold the glory of God, there's a, supposed to be a, a work of transformation, a metamorphosis, change to the same image. So God is not ashamed for you to become him on earth. When they see you, they've seen him. <laughs> then you will know the package God has for you. And you will not be walking here and thinking that witches and wizards are bombarding you and kicking you left, right, center. You know how to grow as a kingdom and bear rule here on earth. That is why he says that in, in Romans, uh, Revelation chapter 5, he made them kings and priests to reign on earth. Kingdom is manifested by kings and supported by priests. So he talks about reigning, ruling on earth as an individual. So don't miss next week. Please be on your feet. Lift up your voice, give God thanks. Lift up your voice, give God thanks. Lift up your voice, give God thanks. Appreciate God. Somebody give God thanks. Open your mouth, thank God. Open your mouth, give God thanks. Father, we thank you. Father, we are so grateful. Father, we are so thankful. We thank you for the privilege to know. Thank you for knowledge. Thank you for insight. We are so grateful, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please take note of this announcement. We meet here on Tuesday, 6.30 to 8 p.m. for our evening service. Friday, 9 to 10.30 for the sickest a platform for those that want to seek the kingdom. Those that were here on Friday will tell you that they got the beginning of this. <laughs> and then Saturday, the Estes, a platform for females to pray. For females to pray. When women pray, it's powerful. The Estes, come and pray. And then, the following Sunday, which is the 1st of December, we'll have our morning service as usual. Encounter with the Spirit of Truth. A Jesus encounter moment. And then in the evening at 4, we come here to witness the christening of the bouncy baby girl of our brother, Dikta Nene, and then our sister blessed. Amen. 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 Yeah, so don't miss it for anything. Next week, Sunday, 4 p.m. We are here. Now, last week, we had our special healing and deliverance session. Please observe, if you have any testimony, Bring it forth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If God had touched your life, changed things, make things, make it known, I am not hard to find. Find me and tell me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now go in peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here by name Kojo Edusiai? Kojo. Colleague in the office. Has he, has he fallen in the office before? Yes. 
Okay. But I saw like he was walking with a lady, colleague, and then he fell. Well, okay, you let's take it out of here. Let's take it out of here. Let's take it out of here. But he has a heart condition. Is that what you are saying? Yeah, I mean, female holding is a bonding thing. Okay, all right, let's take it out of here. Let's take it out of here. It is well. Go in peace in the name of Jesus Christ. The peace of God establish the counsel of God concerning your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And let this move of God not miss you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a lovely Sunday. See you. Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Bye-bye.